I really uh, feel quite self-conscious um, uh, talking to this uh, topic because we have not done a lot of thinking around this. So this is the equivalent. Please don't be fooled by our fancy slides. This is the equivalent of somebody thinking out loud five minutes after they have thought of a topic and thought of doing something. So I just really want to emphasize that when we get to the question and answer, when you ask me a question, I am going to write it down and say, great question, we will think about that. Um, so I just want to lower expectations about that. Um, before I, I get into the detail of this, I was tempted um, to do a slide in some of the demand management work we've done over the last uh, five or six years. Um, it would have been inadequate compared to males in terms of what they've been doing on summer savers. Uh, in terms of our residential program, uh, we've done a trial this summer with 28 people, so they would only need that half of the room if they were all here. Uh, and that's been fantastic because we've learned a ton from them and they've learned a ton from us. Uh, and it's been a really dramatic impact um, on the three events we called. Uh, we got about 40% demand reduction from them compared to their baseline. So 36, 39, and 43%. Now, we did give them five bucks a kilowatt hour for that, um, but that was all we gave them, and we're really impressed with that. So we're going to try and catch up with Mel as quick as we can. Um, we're also involved at Yakindanda with the totally renewable Yakindanda people, and they are just, that has been a fantastic process for us in terms of getting to know them uh, and trying to do some things that actually meet that community's expectations. And as part of that process, um, I think the, the real community leaders have learned something about the grid, learned something about what will be achievable and when, and we're just going from sort of strength to strength in that relationship. So there are two things I think as a business, we're sort of proud of the way we've engaged and it's been that way of um, getting to know people. Now, in both those cases, we have really done a lot of work to get to know those people. Um, and the question for us is, how do you do more of that without losing that genuine sort of working together as partners? So that's stuff I know about. Love questions on that topic. Um, <laughs> we'll get into the scary bit for me, so be gentle. Um, so I'm going to introduce two people to you. Um, we have, um, and I need to get this right, we have Ali. Ali is a little green person over there on your right. Can everybody see Ali, uh, little green person? And Ali, you will note the eagle-eyed among you, does not have a solar panel. Everybody noticed that? Good. Uh, and then Sharon. Uh, very progressive, um, probably hangs out with Gavin Dufty at the weekend. Um, she has a huge uh, solar panel. And I, and I don't, um, and of course, Sharon there, little blue person. Now, I don't want to make any unkind remarks uh, about blue or green people. It's not for me to be divisive. But they do use a lot of energy. Um, the other unique thing about green and blue people, for the purposes of this very, very simple example, is that they use exactly the same amount of energy every day of the year uh, in exactly the same profile, OK? So roller unusual characteristic, but very consistently seen in green and blue people. Um, so these are the loads. And you can see just a typical uh, solar profile there on the day from Sharon. And you can see a, a, a great profile from Ali as well. So. Uh, Recently, and this is a little bit techy for me, but recently we were renewing our contracts with uh, the retailers that we serve in our metering area. And one of the innovative young people who was responsible for pursuing that said, you know what, we could just take the opportunity to put peer-to-peer -peer trading in here. We could just put in that we can adjust the bills back here at the ranch uh, and, and enable some peer-to-peer -peer trading because a lot of what we're hearing is some of our more active customers would, would love to have a crack at that. What, one of the things we hear particularly in communities is actually that people would like to gift energy to the less well off or gift energy to maybe an elderly relative um, because they've installed solar panels 
but their, their elderly relative doesn't have them. And, and some people might want to trade. So one of our absolute ambitions as a company is to get ready for what our customers might want in the future. We don't 100% know what that is, but let's get ready for it. So now we've got the ability, hopefully nobody comes and asks us to do it too soon, because uh, we were facing a deadline. We had to issue these contracts um, by about three weeks ago. And so we said, well, let's stick this in, and then we'll sort of work out whether people will benefit from it, how we'll do it, how, but let's have the ability to enable this. So how would we do it? Um, so let's say that, um, I need to get this right, Sharon wants to uh, gift or share or trade. That's pretty academic to us, for reasons I'll explain, um, in the profile that you can see on your left. So that's the amount of traded energy. And then the profile that you can see on the right is the substitute data that we would provide to the energy market. So peer-to-peer -peer trading has been enabled. Now, one of the things is physically, nothing's changed. The market still clears in the same way. It doesn't affect the net outcome. Um, it's simply that Sharon, for whatever consideration uh, she thought was worthwhile, has given Ali this energy. And of course, on my very simple explanation, um, yellow and blue people live in a really simple network and a really small network. Um, so we sort of got to this point and thought, yeah, that's how it could work, and mathematically it all adds up. Um, well, let's just stop and think for a minute about what this would do today with today's tariffs. Let's just do the sum, do the maths. No more complicated than that. So we ran it through um, three of our current tariffs today. If we enabled this trade over the course of the year, identical profiles, keep it simple, and what you can see is there's an absolutely terrific benefit to Sharon and Ali for doing this. Um, now, it comes out of the fact that um, you reduce that um, uh, energy consumption, the kilowatt hours in particular, um, but you can see that both of them are better off. Now, um, right today, uh, as a business, we are on a revenue cap in our distribution network. So we've used here network as a substitute for the whole pool of customers. Because in fact, if, if this were to emerge in exactly this way, um, this saving, this collective saving that Sharon and Ali get um, would be a saving that would be funded by other customers. And it comes back uh, to that question of dispersion again. Um, there's also a question about, are they across the street? That sort of kind of makes sense. Are they a couple of suburbs away? Or as an electrical engineer, even a reformed one like Peter, might say on a different zone sub or a different distribution transformer? Or are they somewhere that uses more of the transmission network? So um, these are all the questions that I have no idea about. Um, but we just thought, let's simply illustrate this and start to work through it. And I think that's what we're going to need to do. So as I say. Um, any hard questions, I'm simply writing down. In fact, I would really welcome them because we want to sort of really think through this and what the real practicalities are to enable it. But we just wanted to uh, at least be in a space that we can offer this innovation to people as we move forward. So thank you very much.